Hi, I'm Maria, otherwise known as the Fit Foodie. I'm a chef, holistic nutritionist, author, inventor, and mom. And I want to welcome you to my podcast. It's called Recipes for Your Best Life. And with every episode, I'm peeling back the onion on fitness, nutrition, health, wellness, and family. The truth is, you're the chef of your life. And for every important pillar, there's a great recipe worth sharing. So every week, we'll explore them together. Think of it as food for thought that you can really sink your teeth into. So join me, and let's squeeze the joy out of this life, because you only get one. Can I get a fork, yeah? I think it's about time for a mashup episode. How about you? This is where we go back into the last few podcast episodes of Recipes for Your Best Life and give you a little flavor of each one. So hopefully you'll go back and listen to the whole episode. I've got everything from the World Peace Prescription, six mood boosting foods for happier humans, to grapes don't lie, what to watch out for when choosing wine, the deep dive, how Cena C does seafood sustainably. Now say that 10 times fast. Crush the COVID-15, 10 important habits to help weight loss and get back on track. And then the latest episode, how an Olympic champion overcame near death with seed oils. This is the story of Andreas Wecker. And with the Olympics starting this week, I couldn't think of a better time to highlight his story. So take a listen and let me know what you think. Hopefully this gets you inspired. Episode 79, The World Peace Prescription, Six Mood Boosting Foods for Happier Humans. The power of the humble nut and seed is endless. Not only are they a high energy snack and a great way to add flavor and texture to meals, they're a great source of fiber too, which helps your metabolism and digestive function like we just talked about. They're packed with antioxidants, so they're a great source of those and also omega-3 fatty acids. You get zinc, you get magnesium, you get essential vitamins like B and E, which are great for your skin and your nerves. And they're also a wonderful way to stay satiated between meals so you don't get the hangries. That means your blood sugar is staying consistent. Remember what I just mentioned, homeostasis is the goal. You don't want to spike or let your blood sugar dip. And that's where plant-rich foods can come into the fray, especially fatty foods. I like to keep a variety of nuts and seeds at my disposal in my kitchen, add them into salads, combine them with spices, and toast them in the oven or in a pan. Um, I also make nut butters and even desserts with nuts and um, just dark cocoa, at least 70%. I like 80% or more cocoa. And that way you can enjoy just a little sweetness with the fat. And that really is the magic of being able to achieve satiety. That makes you feel satisfied. And that feeds your hormones, <laughs> makes you happy. I talk a lot about the benefits of fat fillers in my book. So you'll find several recipes in there using nuts and seeds too. Number three is antioxidant rich foods. Now supporting a healthy cell environment is critical for not only overall mental well-being, but also for fighting infection and boosting your immunity. When they say make lemons out of lemonade, did they realize that that would lift your mood and help to prevent getting sick too? I mean, what a great side effect. The scent of citrus adds a really nice little kick in your step, but you'll also re reap the benefits of alkalizing your body and purging toxins to help your feel-good hormones stay balanced. Now, strawberries, blueberries, and raspberries are great choices when it comes to antioxidant-rich foods, and they're pretty widely available. If you can't find them fresh, certainly get them frozen, and you can enjoy them on their own, or you can blend them into smoothies throw them into your breakfast bowls or your oatmeal or your cooked quinoa bowl, sprinkle a few berries over the top of your chia seed pudding, for example, which I have a great recipe for that in the book, a blueberry vanilla chia seed pudding with almonds, so yummy. 
And spring is the perfect time to find fresh berries. Just make sure you wash them with Eat Cleaner. Yes, just make sure you wash all your produce with Eat Cleaner, but especially those berries because they're usually picked and packed in the field. And when they're packed, they're not rinsed even. And we know that water is not a cleanser anyway, but they're not even rinsed. So you really want to make sure that they're washed thoroughly. And maybe the best news ever, one of the most important antioxidant rich foods is chocolate. Products made with at least 70% unsweetened cacao can offer a huge boost in your antioxidant uh, power there. And also it's got magnesium and lots of other minerals that will give you a little kick in your step. Episode 80, Grapes Do Not Lie. What to watch out for when choosing wine? If you were to kind of curate, you know, a tasting, which I think a lot of people are starting to do more of at home, you know, I think people are starting to get out more, but it's still really popular to, you know, kind of create your own event at home. You know, what, what would you encourage people to try? I know some of it is a matter of taste, but how would you encourage people to try uh, a variety? Well, I mean, most people have a preference. Some people drink both red and white, but, you know, red drinkers particularly only drink red. Like if you're a red drinker, you just really drink red wine, right? And so (laughs) uh, I'm a red drinker as an example. I don't drink much white wine. Okay. But, uh, and then some people drink both and then some people only drink white. So, you know, choose your color, right? And uh, look, you know, even though it's a subscription, here's the thing we make it super easy to cancel. Like we are not going to try to trick you into this, to a subscription nor uh, there's no questions to answer. We, I mean, we, we, we we'll, when you unsubscribe, we ask you why you left, but that's it. There's no series. Some of these subscription services, they like take you through, you know, screen after screen and they're like trying to dissuade you from dropping out. And it's like, sure. I got out of one just recently. Um, actually they signed me up sort of in a sneaky way in the first place, which we don't do. And, uh, and then canceling took me like, you know, 10 or 15 minutes of clicks and answers and this and that. Right. And we don't do that. So when you sign up for a membership, you set up an account portal, you know, a username and a password. It's super easy to go in your account portal. And as 23% of people do, they subscribe and cancel on the same day before they ever get their wine. What? Right. Because what they want is they want to try a box. Right. So so that's how they circumvent it. You know, great. But when they drink the wine, they'll come back. Right. <laughs> yeah. And, and I encourage people to really do that. I encourage people to try it and continue further. Um, you know, also, we didn't talk about this, but we have a 100 percent happiness promise. And so what does that mean? It means that if you don't like the taste of any wine we send you for any reason, We will replace it or refund it 100%. No questions asked. You don't have to do anything. You can drink the rest of the wine. We don't care. Mm -hmm. If you get a box and you call us up and say, I didn't like any of your wines, we'll give you all your money back. What? That's crazy. Absolutely. Every day of the week. That's amazing. I mean, it rarely happens. Almost never. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's like we're so confident about the quality of our product and the outcome from drinking it that – if you called up and said, I drank all six bottles, I don't like any of them. Okay, great. We'll give you a hundred percent refund. Well, that that's amazing. And that should be an encouragement for everybody. And I'm personally an equal opportunity, red, white, rosé, and everything in the middle drinker. So I think it would be fun for people who are open to trying different things, especially as it's starting to get warmer. Yeah, and just get a mixed box. Get a mixed box and try a variety and and invite your friends over, invite your family over and enjoy it together and make a great meal. Which leads me to my last question for you, nice. Tom, that I ask everybody, if you had one amazing meal left, what would it be? Oh, What wow. would you drink with it? That's, oh, I drink Pinot Denis for sure. It's my favorite grape. Mm. Very rare, super hard to get. We can't even get much of it, but it's kind of my favorite thing. Favorite meals, Deb, wow, they're just all over the gamut, right? I'm like, about uh, favorite. Well, the do I get to choose like meal. restaurants or you mean just like? Just meals. So, it doesn't have to be the restaurant. Yeah. Just what is on the plate? Well, I'd have the beef tartare 
from the Clown Bar in Paris. Episode 81, The Deep Dive, How CNC Does Seafood Sustainably. I don't know how, what you think about that, but I would, like if I buy it at a market and it's already slacked out, I freeze it again just to make sure. It's like my peace of mind if I'm, yeah. gonna, if I'm not going to cook it. If you're not going to cook it, you want to know it was frozen and you want to know that it was frozen at the proper time and temperature. So I would say this, I would buy it frozen, honestly, because buying fish that's fresh, the clock has been ticking. And by the time you see it in the store at the fish counter, it could be five days old. And then you're, you're, when you freeze it, you're locking in that freshness. If it's done properly at a facility, when it was caught, you could be locking in day of freshness. Plus, there's a whole time temperature scale. So the freezer in your house might not be strong enough to freeze for the proper length of time unless you want to leave it in there a long time. A commercial freezer like what we use is going to freeze it faster and better and therefore get it down to proper temps and then held at the proper temps. So it is one of these, another one of these big misnomers for fish when they think when people think sushi quality they think fresh yeah and sushi quality has to be properly frozen so that is something that here's how we operate all that is they just get your cena c packages (laughs) and then they don't even have to think about it right i i try to shortcut that on some of my emails and say listen just trust us we've done all this research (laughs) (laughs) yeah (laughs) So you've got, we've talked about King, we've talked about Copper River, we've, you mentioned sockeye. Can we talk a little bit about sockeye? Right. So under King is the sockeye on fat content. Copper River sockeye is excellent. It's what we eat primarily at our house. It has the omega-3s, the big, bold flavor, the gorgeous red color. And that is known for its red color that it holds even after cooking. Mm -hmm. And under that, you have the Copper River coho. The coho is fall fish. So king and sockeye we catch in the spring. Coho is a fall fish. It is lighter on the color. It's a big fish, but it's one step down on the omega-3s, a little bit lighter on the color. wilder too. Wilder in flavor. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really, I think, you know, nature is incredible, but in the spring, we want to throw in the barbecue, and with this bold flavor is perfect, and then in the fall, with the coho, I like it with recipes, and, you know, it's really great in a sauce, and things like that. It's, it's, it's uh, sometimes described as more buttery and mild. People that are accustomed to um, Atlantic um, salmon or farm salmon, that pale or color, mild or flavor, that sometimes they prefer to start with coho because the, the flavor profile is more of a match. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then you have such a variety of different types of fish. I'm just looking at your website right now, halibut, okay? One of my favorites. And I had the chance to visit Alaska many years ago, but I just remember eating the halibut and going, I have never had fish like this in my entire life. Like I, it literally felt like it came, and it probably did, of course it did. <laughs> <laughs> that day, but like I had dove in and caught the fish and was eating it. I mean, it, it just f- was an incredible experience. Um, halibut and halibut cheeks and halibut chop. Like, tell me a little bit about how you offer these different types of products that I've quite frankly never seen that kind of variety. Um, mm-hmm. How it lends itself to your environmental and sustainability message. Well, what we do is we really, we're not trying to be a big guy of the big guys, the big processors. It's all about how many pounds they can get through the plant, how quickly they can chop the heads off and everything goes out the door. And, you know, a little bit of waste to them is nothing because it just means fast, fast, fast. And that's, you know, how it's measured. And then that to me is, is more of a commodity fish. Have you ever wondered, is rinsing my produce with the water that comes out of the sink that I don't even drink enough to really clean it? Well, then you're one of the smartest people I know because you're absolutely right. It's not enough. That's why we created the only all natural and patented line of food wash and wipes. And it's called Eat Cleaner. It's tasteless, odorless, and lab tested. 
and it removes up to 99.9% of the residue that water can't, including pesticides.